good evening everyone so uh, my last topic of drug interactions which i'm going to discuss with you is uh, uh i'm going to start it and before i start my video i want to request you if you like this video and if it is helpful and useful to you kindly subscribe to my youtube channel as dr nitika pharmacology discussion now i'm going to start drug interactions with you so a 55 year old male uh presented in emergency department with increased frequency and in burning maturation along with high grade fever on the basis of laboratory findings he was found to have urinary tract infection for which he was given injection of mycosin 500 mg iv od means he was suffering from urinary tract infection so he was given injection of mycosin 500 mg iv od which is a minor glycoside After one to two days, he complete difficulty in eye closure, generalized muscle weakness, and fatigue. Now he was having the symptoms of myasthenia gravis. So on taking complete fast history, he was found to be suffering from myasthenia gravis and was taking neostigmine, fifteen milligram. QID means four times a day for the past twelve years. What could be the reason for the appearance of these symptoms, and what can be done to correct it? So. Uh, firstly, he was prescribed mycosin for urinary tract infection, and he was suffering from myasthenic gravis. So he was on neostigmine therapy, fifteen milligram QID. So, uh, what could be the reason for appearance of these symptoms? Which symptoms? That is, eye closure, generalized muscle weakness, and fatigue. And what has to be done to correct? So, as patient is suffering from myasthenic gravis, so he has less number of postsynaptic receptors available for the action of acetylcholine. Aminoglycoside antibiotics further reduce neuromuscular blockage. So, aminoglycoside they produce the further neuromuscular blockage in myasthenic gravis. Already, the uh, postsynaptic nicotinic receptors are less available because antibodies are attached to these uh, nicotinic receptors. So, action of acetylcholine is less. So, uh, aminoglycosides they inhibit the acetylcholine release from the pregranionic terminal through competition with the calciums and thus interfere with mobilization of centrilocator synaptic vesicles to fuse with the terminal membrane. Means, uh, the synaptic vesicles will not fuse it with the terminal membrane. The so there will be no other uh, acetylcholine release will be inhibited. And they also uh, to a lesser extent by non-competitively blocking the receptor. They also block the nicotinic receptors also, and they decrease the sensitivity of muscle and pain to acetylcholine also. Means they decrease the sensitivity to mus uh, of the muscle and pain to acetylcholine also. So when patient is suffering from myasthenia gravis, and on drugs like neuromuscular blocking agents, they like the uh, aminoglycosides, tetracyclines, polymyxin, B colistin, lincomycin. Should be used with caution as they are. They can enhance the neuromuscular blockage. So dose adjustments should be reconsidered as that is the that is the dose of neuromuscular blocking agents should be decreased if patient is receiving high dose of amino glycosides. Means we should uh, reduce the dose of neuromuscular blocking agents also. And ah, uh, uh, amino glycosides dose should also be reduced if recovery of spontaneous aspiration is delayed. Calcium salts may facilitate the recovery, and IV calcium gluconate is a preferred treatment. Means if there is generalized muscle weakness and paralysis of respiratory muscles, we have to give IV calcium and calcium gluconate. In humans, no, uh, neuromuscular blockade uh, generally has occurred after intra intrapleural or intraperitoneal installation of large doses of an amino glycoside. So, uh, in humans, the neuromuscular blockade generally has occurred after the uh, intrapleural or intraperitoneal installation of the amino glycoside. However, the reaction can follow IV, IM, or even oral administration of these agents. The order of decreasing potency of blockade with various amino glycosides is neomycin, canamycin, amycin, gentamycin, and tobramycin. So next is a 65-year-old diabetic male was stabilized on insulin therapy. He developed increased frequency of migraine attacks. He was started on propanolol 10 mg per day, gradually increased to 40 mg per day over three weeks. Because now the patient was a diabetic and he was on insulin therapy and he had the migraine attack. So he was given propanolol 10 mg per day and which was gradually increased to 10 mg per day, 40 mg per day. One month later, the patient 
presented with a fainting attack and profuse sweating. And uh, since 2 p.m. that day, at that time, uh, that is 4 p.m., the RVS levels were 60 milligram per day deciliter. Means the random blood sugar levels were 60 milligram per deciliter at the 4 p.m. Means there was hypoglycemia. The tail history reveals that the patient had missed his uh, scheduled lunch. He didn't take the lunch uh, at 2 p.m. Discuss the pharmacological basis of hypoglycemic episode and what can be done to minimize it. Means why the hypoglycemia took place and why the patient was unknown about that hypoglycemia. And he, then he landed with fainting attack and profuse wetting. Why it was? Now this I will discuss with you. Because the warning signs of hypoglycemia like palpitations, tremors, anxiety are masked. Why? Because when the patient was on the insulin therapy and the uh, and the patient took the propanerol for migraine attack, the hypoglycemic symptoms will be masked. Why? Because propanerol will block the beta-2 receptors also and beta-1 receptors also. So, uh, the action of the palpitations, tremors uh, will not come and they will be masked. Because it will block the beta-1 um, cardiac stimulation, it will block tremors, beta-2 vasodilator tremors will be blocked. Anxiety will be masked. So the symptoms of the hypoglycemia are masked and the patient landed in emergency and uh, the de detection of hypoglycemia was delayed and that led to severity of the hypoglycemic attack, hypoglycemic episode. A 64-year-old male complained of gradual onset of resting tremors of hands for the past three months. So now a 64-year-old man he complained of gradual onset of tremors of the hands for the last three months and he was also revealed bradykinesia, grog wheel, rigidity, tremors at rest and diagnosed with idiopathic Parkinson's. Patient was started on levodopa combination and carbidopa combination. This was improved. There was improvement in the symptoms of the patient on follow-up at six months. Because there was improvement in the symptoms of the patient on follow-up up at six months. Two months later, patient presented with psychosis and was started on haloperidol. Subsequently, there was increase in bradykinesia, tremors. What could be the reason for the worsening and what can be done to minimize it? So now the patient was suffering from foggy rigidity, bradykinesia, tremors. So he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And then uh, he was given levodopa and carbidopa combination. Now then the patient developed the psychosis as the side effect of this levodopa and carbidopa and then he was given haloperidol. And then his condition worsened when haloperidol was started. So what could be the reason? So psychosis occurs due to excessive dopaminergic activity in the brain. Means the uh, psychosis it occurs due to excessive dopaminergic activity in the brain. Haloperidol is antipsychotic drug. It acts by blocking D2 receptors. Now, haloperidol is the antipsychotic drug. It will uh, block the D2 receptors. And uh, so, psychosis will improve. But symptoms of Parkinson's disease will exaggerate. So, it is irrational. Instead of haloperidol, some atypical antipsychotic drugs like quartiapine, clozapine, or lenzapine must be given. As these mainly act on D4 receptors and produce minimal or no extra pyramidal side effects. So, the patient was on levodopa and carbidopa. He developed psychosis. So, to treat that psychosis, haloperidol was given. And when haloperidol was started, it blocked the T2 receptors and caused the extrapyramidal symptoms in which um, Parkinson's was also included. So, it was uh, Parkinson-like tremors were also included. So, psychosis uh, was improved, but that side effect, extrapyramidal side effect came. So instead of haloperidol, we can start with quartiapine, olanzapine, clozapine, which block the D4 receptors, and they have the no extrapyramidal side effects. Thank you. That's all. Be happy, be blessed, stay safe, happy learning, all the very best. Thank you. If you like this video, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Nitika Pharmacology Discussion. Thank you.